This video records the experience of Global Health Organization for the first 15 years. And it was presented at a meeting which uh, was a pivotal time in our history of Global Health, in which we're changing leadership. And I'm Lynn Staley. I am the founding founder and, the, and volunteer director of Global Health Organization between the beginning of 2002 and this year. How did Global Help start? Well, I think it started because we had experience in teaching. We had visited 60 countries and taught in 40 countries and had the opportunity of seeing medicine practice around the world. And this was a great experience in terms of giving us perspective, I think. One of the things that we found was that books were very scarce. This woman looked so bored because no one was coming to her book stall because they couldn't afford the books. Some of these books, or most of these books, were several months' wages of an orthopedist, and they couldn't really afford them. And also the books were scarce, for instance, in this library in Hanoi, Vietnam, largest, largest hospital, had only a series of books which is about the size of a clinic library in the United States. We thought about this, and plus what, what else could we do? Well, you can give money, we can give treatments, we can give supplies, or we can go ahead and continue in giving, giving education helping people learn to help themselves, certainly creating greatest amount of sustainability and also the greatest impact per dollar. When the 9-11 tragic event occurred, it prompted thinking about what could one do to really help the world in terms of having it not so chaotic and, and, uh, and uh, unstable. And we didn't believe in the military option, which has proven to be right, but we thought that there should be a humanitarian approach because people that are healthier are probably less likely to get into violent situations. So we conceived of Global Help Organization and thought about the name. We thought of help, health education using low-cost publications. Today meaning the cost, the cost is zero or free publications. And is now at 15 years. The funding, founding principles included a number of them. We were particularly important to have non, be non-political and humanitarian in focus and valuing diversity, both racial, cultural, and religious. We emphasized children's health and creating publications which were affordable, relevant, and effective, promoting sustainability, and above all, being non-commercial. And so no money was involved giving uh, a greater focus on the problems existing rather than on profits. We had a number of startup publications which were very useful. One of one, some of which were from our friends in Turkey, Selim and, Yel and Nedra, who were very able um, uh, physicians in, in, uh, in um, Istanbul. And they had produced already a number of publications in cerebral palsy and spina bifida. It was a whole family project. So this provided us with a number of early publications which we valued so much. We also thought that maybe because we learned how to do digital uh, publishing using what web, uh, uh, desktop publishing met methodology, we could teach doctors to make their own books. And we convinced, we had meetings about doctors and teaching programs, but it really didn't work, so we had to give that up, unfortunately. We thought, what is one of the great needs currently? And one of them was of having a book on clubfoot, because clubfoot was a common problem around the world between 506 and 1,000 kids, one per 1,000 kids produced so there were children around the world that were getting, not getting treated because of the expense and the problems. And this Bangladesh gentleman wanted to have his daughter corrected because he didn't want her to go through a life of disability as he had. And so for about $140, one can correct the deformity in childhood, convert a child that would have 60 years of disability to a basically normal life. And we produced this red book, which was designed to be very simple and very, and, and very easily understood and it was immediate success. It was used around the world in a teaching program. People take scores of these to medical meetings and distribute them. And it was also selected for the Blue Trunk Library of WHO, considered to be one of the best publications. And since 2010, this Clubfoot booklet has had 600,000 downloads in English alone and 2.3 million in all languages. And what are the, why did it was so successful? First of all, it was a topic for which is of very great interest. Second, it was not long. It was only 32 pages. It was also colorful, graphic, and engaging. 
So these are the reasons why it was such a say and has been such a great success. We also found that people would voluntarily translate the language, the book. We did this in Clifford in three languages, and we see this is true of all the, of all of our publications. Like this, we just got this email showing this woman wanted to translate into Romanian. We just get these emails very frequently, and we help them. We help them uh, uh, do the do the process, go through the process, so that the people in their own country can utilize the material in their own language, which is very important. Another another uh, step that happened was. Uh, was an example by the pre med student Kelly Ledbetter. Her mother, who's a doctor, said, What can Global Health do to help my daughter who wants to get into, go into medical school learn about the world? And we so talked to uh, Dave Spiegel and others, and uh, he said, Well, we'll arrange for her to go to Bangladesh or to uh, Nepal. And I know the doctors there and work in the clinic. So she went to Nepal, worked with these doctors, and t taught, picked out a topic which they were skilled at, had unique abilities which is on managing burn contractures in infants because a lot of the infants would fall in the cooking fires in the middle of the of their space and get burns. They learned how to take care of them. And she produced this wonderful book on how they manage these burn contractures. And this was spread around the world. It's now in 200 or 200,000 downloads in two languages. Also changed the life of thousands of children. And also Kelly, now she's a plastic surgery resident with an interest in focusing on burns. Another big step came when we uh, took on the project of the African Pediatric Surgery Book. And this was supported by, by uh, uh, George Hamilton financially. Um, this book was created by 150 authors who worked in Africa, creating 155 chapters of most common surgical problems in children. And uh, they looked around for a publisher, and they couldn't get anybody, any of the regular publishers, to handle it because there's no money in it because the Africa bought doctors didn't have any money and couldn't afford it. And the book was very large, added to the problem. And so we took the book and we sent it off to a number of different colleagues and they looked at it and they said, this is a great book. So we took it on the project, both in formatting and text editing and publishing and printing. And so we printed, we printed uh, these books, which was very big, like it was a thousand pages. And uh, we distributed a thousand copies. But looking at it by comparison, we had now we have uh, the whole book is on a website. They can check, download individual chapters of the whole book. We've had over 700,000 whole book downloads of this other book. And this was a very uh, great step forward because people could see that our methods were, were honest. Uh, they didn't have any advertising, uh, that they were, it was effective, and it was very highly utilized. So we've had a number of books being given to us for distribution for that reason. We have a textbook, cerebral palsy anesthesia, practical surgery, rehab medicine, and so forth. So this was a big step forward. Also, we were on the edge of creating a digital library, putting all our books on a DVD. And this was made for a dollar, supported by the Merriman family. And uh, it was very successful because doctors could take 50 or 100 of these, give them out to the doctors, and they didn't need the internet. They could use their on their own computer. But because now the USB ports are more common and DVD is Ports are very uncommon. We're going to flash drives. So you can also put on the, 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 the uh, uh, videos as well. We made a major change in the focus from the print of the, the digital, as we talked about. And a comparison, for example, in our African book. It printed, it weighed 5.5 pounds. Trying to ship it around was just a nightmare. Whereas we can do it through the web at very little cost, and we can have much greater distribution. We expanded our focus on video education. We're inspired by Salman Khan from the Khan Academy, who had written a book on the one-room schoolhouse for the world, and it set an example. He himself had made 3,000 videos on math education and started the academy, and created this academy in which tens of millions of students around the globe are utilizing. And the concept that he created was to create videos so kids could learn at their own speed and repeat if necessary, and then go to class and discuss the topic. And this is called a flipped classroom which is ideal also for medicine. He also showed that very simple videos could be very, very effective. They need to be glissy. And a sample of the videos that we've started making, this is a children's hospital showing how to do this examination, which is very common. You see it's very graphic. This is in Santiago, Chile, mother being shown how to put on the pavlicarnus on her infant with the, with the hip, hip dislocation. And you notice that this, this works, and she can go again back to the... To the uh, 
YouTube and see, see it again if she forgets things. And you see, this is very, very graphic and very effective way of teaching. Or teaching people how to examine a child who is thought to have a certain hip problem. And this has been very effective, much better than if you try to write it out. Uh, we have new websites, which is another innovation. POA and English and Spanish subsites. The concept being that we would have the mother site, which would be Global Health Organization, and then have subsites for distribution and specific specialties like pediatric orthopedics. They're designed to make uh, navigation easier. And this has been a great success and also now is in, has a Spanish version of the same site. So this could be expanded, having shown that it really works well. We've had a massive user expansion. And we went now to nearly 20 million downloads of our PDFs, of nearly 180 titles, nearly every country in the world being represented. And we've had nearly two-thirds two of a million views of our videos. And we have 35 different languages. And the amazing thing is, is the steep rise in user, use, user activity. And you see that this has happened in the last decade. And at one time we thought if we ever got to 1,000, we'd be thrilled. Now we're nearly at 20,000. And why is this? Well, I think there are a number of reasons. One of them is that most of, well, most of the websites have distracting ads and delayed access. And you have to sign in with your email and you have to pay or you have to be a member of an organization. Whereas Global Health Organization, everything is free and it's totally open access. We have no ads or promotions to swade through. Uh, there are no requests for the email addresses, and our material is authoritative and useful and very practical. Well, uh, one of the things that I wanted to emphasize in this talk is how many people have been involved with this process. And I'm very pleased with our board. We've had three of the, uh, the first 50, uh, th five members of the board still with us, and we've had longevity of our material, of our of our staff and people who have been supportive of the organization. We started off with a small office on East Lake. Um, and during the recession, we cut back to being frugal. And when a lot of nonprofits went uh, were uh, bankrupt, and we've always maintained a very healthy economic status because we're very frugal. And we've had a very good staff, Dean and uh, uh, Brita, were both recruited through through like Craigslist. Dean has been with us for ten years, been the webmaster, manager, excellent technician, and the technical abilities and great asset to have that longevity and that skill with us still. And Breed adds a huge number of different talents and is a great addition as well. And I made a list of all of, of the people that were involved in Global Help and it was really amazing to me to see how many people are involved in various capacities. And we love our volunteers. And we have people like uh, Viviana, who have been a co-exhibitor uh, for the last four years, done it free with enthusiasm because they believe in the mission. And we've had the mission from uh, International Consulting Board who value the mission. We've had 10 countries represented and these different doctors from around the world are all now advocates of global health organizations give us advice and, and direction. And there's some, some people say, why are you doing, you're doing so well? Why do we need more money? Why do you need the people, us to donate? Well, most people are, moti are, are motivated by the mission and the philosophy and being humanitarian. And others are motivated in part by the fact that they know their money is being used life so well. One of our oldest, uh, earliest, and most generous contributors always said, well, we know that there's going to be a big bang for the buck if we give to global health organization. So we know they know that there's no going, to, going, to, going to be no glitzy offices or high overhead. And that we're, we're going to, their, their, their doctors are going to be stretched to the great and have the greatest degree of good. And our mission is always going to be first. We're going to help children. That's our goal. And they're just going to do this for children around the world, regardless of where they come from. We can have more scholarships, like with Kelly's. We can say, go students and give them a small scholarship to help make a videos overseas and, and sort of mine great ideas that should come from the user. We can have more distribution websites, or subsites, as they're called. So we have a pediatric uh, orthopedic academy. We can also have a ped ped surgery academy or pediatric academy. So the concept is now sh shown to be a, a valid and could be expanded, and we could do that with, with more funding. Educational video projects. <clears throat> uh, making videos are, is a way of the future. And certainly, the, from the Western perspective, making videos that focus on physical examination are ways of, tr of, of making the diagnosis which can be used worldwide. That's the really critical thing. Or things that for care would be made in user countries and showing 
what can be done and how to do things in a way that's, uh, that's expandable and uh, feasible for world expansion. We can expand Global Health Exhibit uh, reach by creating exhibit, more exhibits, creating journal publications, professional presentations. These can all expand the scope and the reach of the organization. And we chase challenges for the future. We have a new, new leadership with the president of Lana Staley and with the right-hand man being Sam, our board chair, and the left side have our board, have our board. And I might add that I'm medical, was the medical director, and I'll be sort of a, a wandering uh, uh, consultant if, if they need my thoughts. So I want to thank you for watching, and send us any any comments if you have them or have any questions.